If the church didn't compromise and vote in leaders that were pro-choice or pro-death, now listen to me this morning. You say, well, Christians, yeah, Christians, I, I, I pastor long enough. I, I've seen enough of it. Yep. Our last election, we got, a, we got a pro-death president in the White House. Yep. We had a pro-death Congress for, in there for four years. Yep. Pro-death. See, I, when I vote, what do I vote on? I vote on one issue. I'm a one-issue voter. It's not economics. It's life or death. If that man's pro-life and I know it, come on, he'll get my vote. If he's pro-death, I don't care how he stands, anywhere else, he will not get my vote. And the church voted in. Come on, that man could not be in the White House today without the church. 95% of one race voted for him, approximately. Well, I know 95% of them are not all heathens. Big percent of them claim to be Christian. But they voted a pro-death president and a pro-death Congress, therefore establishing this law of the land. Are, are Christians complacent? Well, it's not just one race. There's a lot of the other race also done it. That claim to be Christians, and it wasn't just this election. It's been election after election that we voted these people in office that permit this stuff in the land. So are we complicit? Yes, come on, say yes, we are. Not all of us, but there's many that are that claim to be Christian. Yep. So if the church didn't compromise and vote in leaders that were pro-choice or pro-death, they wouldn't be in office. There's enough Christians to vote in anybody we want in America that claim to be Christian and that claim to be pro-life. Come on, there's a Catholic church. We may not agree whether they're Christian or not, but they claim to be pro-life. Yeah. Forty million Catholics in America... It, them alone could vote in pro-life leaders. That's not counting the evangelical Christians, 60 million strong, supposedly. That's 100 million supposedly pro-life people in America. It only takes 60 million to vote in a president and a Congress. Or less, less than it for a Congress. It's state by state. And yet we see these pro-choice, pro-death leaders that the church lets get in office because we don't do what we're supposed to do. Am I making any sense this morning? Amen. So we see they wouldn't be in office. Too, too many times we vote based on political considerations. Come on. And economics. Who we think is best for our pocketbook, not the morals of our nation. And our economic situation is a symptom of our morals. So we got it backwards. We think, well, if I vote the man that promises me the most, he'll be the man that helps me. No, he won't. If he's immoral, I don't care what he promises you, he can't deliver. Because God won't permit it. We done read in the Bible, God will not be mocked. Come on, God's word is true, and what God said will happen, it will bring a curse on the nation. And what God said is cursed, we cannot change it by saying it's blessed. We must change our actions. Come on, based on the word of God, we must hate what God hates. We must get on the Lord's side. You remember in the Bible, said, who's on the Lord's side? He said, come over here. And the ones on the other side, the earth opened and swallowed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, who's on the Lord's side? There's a line being drawn in the sand today. Who's on the Lord's side? Come on, it'll, it'll, see, God sees in the ballot box. God sees who you vote for. I may not see, but God does. God knows what you're doing. And if you're voting for pro-death, you're sinning. Come on, let's be honest this morning. Murder, God hates that. And if I'm complicit and let my neighbor get murdered and don't call the law when I see it happening, I'm a part of it. Well, we've done the same thing with innocent babies and allowed it to happen. Okay? We've got to quit voting economics and start voting morals. I like what David Barton said. He said, if a man is pro-life, just about everything else will line up. Just about everything else he believes will come out right. If he's pro-death, come on, everything else will be off. Come on, how many know God stands for life? Come on, God's not, come, the Bible said death is an enemy. It's not a friend. Not, the last enemy, which is death, it shall be destroyed. It is not a friend. So we shouldn't vote for pro-death people. Now look at, look at Psalms 33, 12. Blessed is the nation. Now we see what cursed a nation the shedding of innocent blood brought a curse. It says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. 
Now, if, if this nation, if, if, you know, see, I know the whole nation, we got sinners in America, they need to get saved. And then there's wicked people. There's a difference. There's sinners and there's the wicked. God is angry with the wicked. He's not angry with the sinner. He wants to get them saved. The wicked have made a choice. They've made their choice, and that's what they are. But he said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. He said, well, America is supposed to be a Christian nation. Yeah, it's supposed to be. And there's enough in America claim to be Christian that we would be a Christian nation if we live Christian and vote Christian. Can we say amen? And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. So we can have a blessing or we can have a curse. We can sit back and let the curse come on America and vote with the heathen. Or we can say, we are Christians, we stand for righteousness, and we're going to vote righteousness. Can we say amen? And the Bible said it will bring a blessing. And that's what God is about to do to America. Because the church is starting to wake up. This is not a bad news message this morning. I'm going to end it with good news. Come on, we see darkness, but God is starting to shine the light. The tide is starting to turn. I'm just trying to wake some up from stragglers. You might be a straggler this morning. Ain't quite got with the program. And I don't mean my program, I mean God's. Amen. Come on, the kingdom of God program. Can we say amen? You might be still asleep, but God's shaking you this morning. The house is on fire. And God's trying to wake you up. You know, if, if the house is on fire and a man is sleeping, you might do some extreme things to get him awake. You might even slap him to get him awake because the house is on. He may fight you a little bit because he knows, he wonders, why did they slap me until he realized the house is on fire? Then he'll get out of there. You may have to drag him out. Well, see, God has sent some people to drag us out and get us on the right side. To do a little slap and say, wake up. Come on, God's about to do some things. He wants you to come along. Be a part of it. Don't be left behind. Don't be a part of the curse. Be a part of the blessing because God wants to bless your life. Amen? Okay, so we take it from a nation to personally. See, the God, see if a majority gets on the right side and the laws begin to change, the nation will be blessed, but if you still stay on the other side, you'll still have the curse, even though God wants to bless you. Is anybody hearing me this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. That means get involved in doing what's right. Okay. So this nation stands or falls based on what the church does. If the church as a whole starts standing against what God hates, and for what God loves, God will cause the blessing to come upon our nation. But if the church don't, then God cannot without violating his own word, and that he cannot do. Can we say amen? amen? Okay. So we know the bad news is as a nation we have aborted. I don't you know how many we've aborted. Do you have any f figures? 53 million unborn children. A lot of innocent blood shed. Since 1972, I believe it was, or 71? 73, okay. I knew it was in the early 70s. But here's the good news. The good news is Ohio has a bill that would outlaw abortion as soon as a heartbeat is detected. And it has passed their house and is going to the Senate. <laughs> Come on, see. Now that's a start. Now I want to read a little bit of argue about it. The proposed bill is simple in its concept. It would prohibit abortion when the unborn baby's heart is detectable. This is approximately six to eight weeks after conception. You know how many abortions that will eliminate? Don't think there's not going to be a battle to stop it. Don't think it won't head up to the Supreme Court. It will. But that's not the only state. Even though the idea was conceived in Ohio, it may not get to be the first to enact this protective legislation. Inspired by the Buckeye State's approach to ending abortion, Kansas is now pursuing this legislation, and their pro-life governor, Sam Brownback, need to pray for him, may sign into law before Ohio to Ohio's delight. In addition, six other states are said to be involved in varying degrees promoting a similar heartbeat bill of their own. Now, so that's six others, so that's eight states we know if they get this bill passed, now, you say, what will that do? Well, number one, it'll eliminate most abortions. Because about as soon as the woman knows she's pregnant, come on, there's a heartbeat. And it can be detected. It'll be illegal. Well, you say, well, well that one it does. And it'll go to the Supreme Court. I want it to. I want it to go there. Come on, that's where this law came from. This law was not legislated in our legislators in the government, federal government. It was made legal by the Supreme Court that had no right to do so. 
And it needs to go back to the Supreme Court and be changed. Can we say amen? And as we as ch the church begin to pray and begin to elect pro-life leaders to our government, come on, this will change. Because I believe America is more pro-life than pro-death. I don't believe America is pro-death. But see, this will change when it gets to the Supreme Court. I know there's four votes will vote life. And there's one, I begin to read the article, that is in the last few years beginning to turn that direction also. We need to pray for him, Justice Kennedy. Pray that God will move on his heart if this gets to the Supreme Court. That he'll vote life over death. And in the last, he's, beginning to, he's starting to make statements in that direction. Because God must be dealing with his heart already. So that would be five against four, and Roe versus Wade would be overturned. And abortion would be illegal in America. And God would cover that shedding of innocent blood with his blood. Can we say amen? But it's based on us, the church, doing something. Amen? So what must the church do? Simple. Number one, pray. Can we say amen? Pray for these leaders. Pray for our Supreme Court. Pray that when this goes to the Supreme Court... It'll come out right that God will have his way, that God will intervene, bind the powers of Satan and darkness that's trying to influence the minds of men to make wrong decisions. Okay? That's number one. Number two is the election of more pro-life legislators and governors. That's what's causing this to happen now. There was more pro-life legislators and governors in the last election, 2010. It's why we're seeing this happening in these states. In 2010, they elected pro-life people to government. And now we're seeing a change beginning. The, the door is coming open. The light is beginning to shine. Can we say amen? So what's the thing must we do to, to continue this? Number one, prayer. Come on, we need to pray for these leaders. Pray that God will begin to turn this thing around. Get involved. Can we say amen? Number two, the election of more pro-life legislators. Governors and pro-life president and a pro-life president. Yes. And if the church don't do it, it will not get done. Amen. Come on. How many say we can be a part? Everybody here, if you agree with this and start hating what God hates, come on, say you can pray. <laughs> and in the next election, if you're not registered to vote, vote. Get registered. And vote pro-life. Find out there's there's people running. Some of them may say they're pro-life. Check the record out. I don't listen to what a man says. I listen to what he does. Can we say amen? You check the man. I was one of them running. And I'm not here to name names from the pulpit, but you come see me, I'll name a name. When he was a governor of a state, he was screaming at his constituents that were trying to say he was pro-life. He was screaming, I'm not pro-life. I'm not pro-life. Now he's saying he's pro-life. I don't believe him. And he's one of the leaders right now. Yeah, he'll do anything to get elected. That's exactly right. Don't listen to men's rhetoric at a debate. Find out what they've done in the past. Find out their voting records. Find out how they live the, most, the best you can. Can we say amen? And then pray. Ask God. God, show me. How many of you, me and you, I'm going to be, you're going to be held accountable for this. Because God hates the shedding of innocent blood. And if I've got my fingers in it, Come on, one day I'll give account for it. It's murder. And the Bible says, you're, the Bible you have in 1 John, no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. That's right. She said, that's strong. No, that's the Bible. God said it. No murderer. You see, you're calling me. No, I'm not calling you anything. I'm just telling you, if you've done so, repent. Can we say amen? Repent. Say, God, forgive me. He'll forgive you. But you have to repent while you're still alive. Don't wait till it's too late. Can we say amen? There's a, there's, a whole, there's a whole church that needs to hear this. That voted in the last election and voted for pro-death. How many of they need to repent? Because the Bible is very clear about it. And if you've done the same, you know, you say, God, forgive me. I didn't know. I was ignorant. And God will forgive you. Thank God. I thank God for grace. How about you today? I am so thankful. I don't have bad news. I got good news. But if we don't listen to the message, come on, it'll become bad news. For the America and for our very lives. Amen. How many received this today? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray and going to do what's right. Because you could ignore me today. But I'll tell you one day, you will stand before God and you won't ignore Him. And what I preach today will come before you.
and you'll be held accountable for it. Amen. Hallelujah.